visit to Elko, Nevada is complete without a stop at the Star, the venerable Basque restaurant, home to a powerful elixir called Pecan Punch, where the doors to the kitchen see more traffic than a big city freeway, and where waitresses serve impossible platters of hearty grub in a freewheeling hubbub of communal conversation. On the walls of the Star are paintings and posters that reflect Elko's status as the heart and soul of cowboy country. And it looks like people here know their horses. You know, the wild horse issue has not been one that's ever been well received up here. Jerry Reynoldson and Lee Otney are in town on a quest worthy of Quixote to palaver with key cattlemen about an audacious idea, the creation of a wild horse sanctuary in a region that has long viewed Mustangs as an enemy. There will always be people who are going to say they're just feral animals, get rid of them. In an adjacent dining room, the regulars would not disagree. No. Wild horse. Wild horse. No. Wild horse. Like Hostility toward wild horses is often expressed with something more than bravado, bullets. Hundreds of horses have been shot down in rural Nevada in recent years, not just one or two at a time, but often entire bands. The killings are almost never solved, so it's hard to say if they are crimes of opportunity or passion. Some go way beyond target practice. Killing for sport and thrill, but the manner in which they happen is well beyond what goes on with other wildlife. I mean, I document incidents in which horses have, been, have had their legs sawn off. The disdain for wild horses among ranchers runs deep, but it wasn't always this way, and Reynoldson thinks it can change, which is why he invited us on a helicopter ride. It's a view that skews one's perspective. We covered hundreds of square miles without passing over a single house. This is the land where the first horses were born, where equine offshoots lived, died, disappeared. From the air, the range seems perfect for Mustang herds, with acres of grass in the high country, ribbons of greenery surrounding year-round streams, the epitome of wide open spaces, but not for wild horses. They were rounded up years ago. Who's riding in front? In Jackpot, Nevada, we met up with businesswoman Madeline Pickens, wife of oil billionaire T. Boone Pickens. Mrs. Pickens and her dog Oliver are in town to do some shopping. They're looking for a ranch, a little place of half a million acres or so. Pickens has spent 17 months and more than a million dollars of her own money in pursuit of a dream, the creation of a wild horse sanctuary that would take Mustangs out of the BLM holding pens and let them run free in a natural habitat. Unlike other BLM facilities, hers would be open to the public an ecotourism attraction that could draw a million visitors a year. What's more, the horses would stay wild. There are so many creative ways you can think about afterwards, you know, jeeps where you go out like on a safari, you look for the wild herds. We can have an education center with videos, histories. I have got thousands of emails from people, from school teachers, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, people that want to come and be the cook. We'd love to see you. Yes, ma'am. Pickens undoubtedly brings an aura of star power okay. to the wild right. horse debate. She was drawn to the issue after hearing about Mustangs and other horses being sent to slaughterhouses. Oop, look out, guys. When she learned that BLM's corrals are essentially full, Pickens launched her idea. She's lobbied key congressional leaders, drummed up public support through an ambitious website, and isn't above taking advantage of her husband's political clout by tying her horse project to his energy plans. Oh, shame on me if I didn't. Finding the right ranch property isn't easy. There aren't many half million acre parcels, even in sprawling Elko County. What Pickens has been seeking is a combination of deeded property, say 60,000 acres, but with contractual grazing rights to adjacent public range, hundreds of thousands of acres. Nearly all of the ranches in this region have signed agreements with the BLM to graze their cattle on public land. That's led to another problem for Pickens. For all the talk about horses being to blame for damaging the range, Pickens and Reynoldson say the ranches they've toured around Elko are heavily damaged, even decimated, because of intense overgrazing by cattle, and the BLM has done nothing to stop it. 
And I looked at a lot of land that has not had any horses on it since 1971. They've simply had uh, cattle on. And I can tell you the land is desecrated. All these stories are myths about these horses that ruin this land. Uh, there aren't enough of them to have ruined the land. One pleasant surprise so far is the response from the ranching community to Pickens' proposal. Anti-horse sentiment runs deep in rural regions, but when a deep pocket shopper comes calling, ancient animosities seem to melt away. You know, I've never worried about them. I, uh, I, I think that what we're doing is good because we leave them alone. They keep their land. All the horses are simply a sanctuary. The property we just flew over, I think, absolutely makes sense. I mean, it's it's a fact that there there was once horses that, that ran on the place. The prospect of an ecotourism attraction is not lost on local business leaders, including cattlemen. So I definitely got some very good potential on making this a project that uh, the American public can come in and enjoy and, and bring some money into the county, and that doesn't hurt a bit either. The problem for Pickens, not surprisingly, is the BLM. The initial enthusiasm shown by agency officials for the Pickens plan has all but evaporated. It is a yo-yo, but it's Washington. In recent months, BLM has raised several legal obstacles while giving Pickens conflicting signals in face-to-face -face meetings. It was a pleasant meeting, but it was, uh, again, uh, one of many meetings where you come away going, what happened? We would all like to hear some resolution, some decision. But it is the government, and they, they tend to move slowly. One issue raised by BLM is telling. Although Pickens has recently made offers on two Elko ranches, BLM says she can't use any of the attached public lands for horses. This same agency has used its discretion to remove horses from millions of acres while allowing cattle to remain, but says it does not have the authority to allow horses to graze on land designated for other livestock. Privately, Pickens has been told she can build her sanctuary somewhere else, but it must be on private land since BLM doesn't want wild horses on public range, which would seem to directly contradict the intent of the 1971 law. So for them to say, you know, we just don't want to use the public lands, runs contrary to the history of the wild horses themselves, runs contrary to what we think you know, the management needs to be. This is where these horses have been for hundreds of years. Coming up, without some kind of solution, the alternatives are grim. Mass euthanizations of horses or selling the Mustangs for slaughter.